Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back. In this short video, I will try to explain uh, what is the dynamic measures uh, in fluid responsiveness uh, assessment and especially carotid artery VTI variability as a tool for detecting fluid responsiveness in hypotensive patient ICU. Uh, as you see here, here on the left is the Frank Starling curve, the famous Frank Starling curve. Here is the VTI, LV, LV, OT, VTI on a patient with controlled mechanical breath. Here is the stroke volume variability with mechanical breath. Some machine will uh, clearly uh, detect it. And here is the pulse pressure variation with patient on mechanical, controlled mechanical breath. Why, why this is fluctuation in fluid responsive state in patient in controlled mechanical breath? To clearly understand this dynamic measures for fluid responsiveness, you need to understand the Frank Starling curve. This Frank Starling curve, as you see here, it determines the relationship between preload, which is the fluid you will give to the patient, and the stroke volume, the result of giving this fluid. As you see, even there is several Frank Starling curves. This is normal curve, this is mildly inverted ventricle, this is markedly inverted ventricle. Okay? Even with decrease in the left ventricular contractility you see here always there is a steep part of the curve and the plateau a steep part of the curve and the plateau we need for our for our hypotensive patient in icu to give fluids we don't need to give fluids if the patient on the plateau part of the curve especially if he has heart failure because giving fluids in this plateau part of the curve is detrimental because it will not increase stroke volume and will increase the congestive symptoms and even in some some in, in some, some circumstances will decrease the stroke volume because of market stretch of the ventricles so the most important part before you give fluids you need to know if your patient on the steep part of the curve. That means there is significant change of stroke volume with preload change. How can we do preload change in patient in ICU on mechanical ventilation? You need special circumstance. First, you need good tidal volume, 8 milli per kg. Second, you need the patient to be totally sedated, no spontaneous breath at all. Third, no arrhythmia, because arrhythmia per se will lead to fluctuation of the stroke volume and the pulse pressure variation. Fourth, you need, you don't need acute cord pulmonary, acute right side heart failure, because if there is acute right side heart failure, it will affect the venous return to the left side. After this, Precaution, you will start the journey for detecting that your patient is on the steep part of the curve or not. You will challenge the circulation by this 8 milli per kg controlled breath. This mechanical breath will increase intrathoracic pressure and this will decrease the venous return. If the patient is on the steep part of the curve, you will find significant change of stroke volume or blood pressure with decreasing venous return by positive pressure ventilation. Because positive pressure ventilation will decrease the venous return. So, with decreasing venous return, you will see decrease if you see the dec significant decrease in stroke volume or blood pressure that means the patient on the steep part of the curve but if you decrease the venous return by post pressure breath 
and there is no change in stroke volume or blood pressure that means the patient on the plateau part and you don't need to give fluids in this situation okay how can we detect these changes with mechanical brain you will start look for this patient i put pulsed wave doppler here in the left ventricular outflow tract here and i will see with mechanical brain this fluctuation of stroke volume which is the surrogate of the stroke volume lvt lvt uh, lvt lvot vti with mechanical brain you see here with inspiration increase and the decrease with increase with inspiration decrease and you can look for the difference between here market increase and the low value here this fluctuation of the LVOT VTI with mechanical breath with the change of the preload because of change of venous return lead to change marked change in LVOT VTI that means the patient on the steel part of the curve the same for pulse pressure variation this arterial line with mechanical breath with decreasing in venous return if you find significant increase or decrease in the pulse pressure or systolic pressure variation that means the patient on the steel part of the curve and here is with stroke volume variability in uh, some machines will uh, will reveal the stroke volume and you can see the change of stroke volume significant change of stroke volume with mechanical breath which is oh, more than 10 percent and for pulse pressure variation it's more than 12 percent okay as you see here detection the variation in pulse pressure and systolic pressure in radial artery give us a clue of fluid responsiveness so as you see here in pulse pressure and systolic pressure variation as a way and as a method dynamic method for assessment of load responsiveness we can rely on the small artery which is the radial artery and we can rely on the pressure not flow why not to use this rule in the carotid artery VTI which is the central artery and as you know despite the brain weight of 2 kg it received 20% of stroke volume and the cardiac output that means there is very good amount of blood flow in this artery which we can assess for fluid responsiveness by dynamic measures with mechanical breath as you see here in this patient if you want to see any fluctuation of the v carotid artery VTI with mechanical breath, that means the patient is in plateau part. But if there is variability here, variability here in carotid artery VTI with mechanical breath of 14, more than 14 percent, it, it is a sensitive way to detect the flow responsiveness like stroke volume variation and like pulse pressure variation, PTI variation and I believe this is simple way, a lot simple uh, more than LVOT, VTI and you can master it, it, you can master it and you can use it in emergency, you can use it in patient with chest trauma and you can use it in very difficult window patient especially if you don't have uh, transesophageal echo and you don't have the, ex the expertise in transesophageal echo in emergency room and thank you a lot for your appreciated listening because uh, we'll see the fluctuation of uh, common carotid artery uh, flow VTI VTI of the common carotid artery for right side fluctuation with mechanical breath controlled mechanical breath if it's fluctuating with mechanical breath 
that means you can consider like VTI, LV or T, VTI, and denote uh, float responsiveness. The difference between carotid artery VTI and LV or T, VTI, is the simplicity. It's very easy to master the carotid, uh, common carotid VTI, okay? You will use <coughs> high frequency bro. You will center here, you will see the carotid. And this increase in the brightness, okay? I will make the focus, okay, very good. I will center on the carotid here. I will, after that, I will go longitudinal, okay? To get the carotid in very good longitudinal way. Longitudinal depth of the carotid. Very clear carotid now. I will put pulse away inside the carotid. And it's going with the angle. Okay. I will freeze and I will see the fluctuation of the VTI of the carotid with the mechanical breath. I will measure the, max, the maximum velocity, maximum velocity here. I can measure the maximum velocity. It is one sixty-five. And I will see the minimum here, which is 161. That means no fluctuation of the common carotid VTI with mechanical dress, which is denoting the patient is not field responsiveness. But if the maximum velocity minus a minimum velocity over the mean velocity more than 14%, it gives an idea about fluid responsiveness of the patient. And this is, I believe, it's simple methods. Simple methods, a lot simple more than VTI. Thank you.